Hi, I'm Ted. It's Andy Horseman and Windy Hill Farm. I want to come to you today and tell you about something that's totally unhorse related, but I think it's an important thing. I believe that uh, every barn should have good cats. And in our barn, we have some of the best cats I know of. And uh, I've been working at it a lot of years to get the best cats around. And uh, our cats are good hunters and they keep the barn where we don't have rats, we don't have mice, we don't have birds. Uh, the cats get up in the rafters and uh, clean out the bird's nests when the babies are hatched. So seldom can you ever come in my barn and see more than a couple birds. Years ago, we used to be plagued with birds, hundreds of them, and rats and mice, and then, then comes the snakes after that. So. I've been working hard. My grandpa was an old farmer and took his cats seriously, and he taught me that importance, and I'm hoping to share with you all some of the ways I am able to manage that and take care of it. So, you got to stay ahead of the parasites. The parasites are a big problem with the cats. So, nobody ever deworms their cats, or nobody ever gives them flea treatment and things, and uh, you, you have to do that. So, what I do, is we feed our cats but we don't overfeed them we just feed them enough to let them make a living but we also want them to make a living hunting so sometimes i like to tell people you feed your cats about every other day in the barn uh, or if you do feed them just feed them by hand just enough to keep them uh, ambitious because if you overfeed them they'll just want to lay around and be lazy so these are some of my cats right here this is Barney. This is a little kitten that I raised this year in the barn. Uh, Nicole, you can scan around and look at show some of the other ones here. Uh, show that one over there on the golf cart, that calico. So. These kittens were born in the spring, and I've done this kind of a, on an experimental thing because I've had a lot of trouble over the years, and a lot of the chemicals that, uh, like the flea drops you put on the cats and things are very harsh, and I don't think that uh, it's good for the cats. Uh, the vet came here one day and gave me these drops to put on the backs of the cats, and the next day I went out there and they were all- hey. They were all dead, and they killed all my cats. Well, I did some research on that those flea drops. Well, you know, these days you don't have to be a scientist because all you got to do is Google things. So I Googled the ingredient to that uh, those flea drops, the main ingredient, and come to find out it was the same ingredient chemical that exterminators use to kill termites. Well, I don't know if I like that. Well, okay. I'm no veterinary, and I'm not giving you any veterinary advice, but here's what I can tell you is, what I've done in a more homespun, backwoods kind of way, and it works pretty doggone good. Uh, when we feed our cats, we put uh, a little bit of diatomaceous earth with their feed. Works like a charm. And then, I sprinkle the cats with this. That's seven dust, okay? Now, that's not a proof for cats. There's no scientific proof of anything here. Everybody you ask is gonna say, oh, that's gonna be dangerous, and that's, you know, whatever, it's chemical or whatever, but you know what? If you look on that label, it's approved to put on your tomatoes in your garden, or your vegetables in your garden. That's what it's made for, to get it at the hardware store for sprinkling on uh, vegetables in the garden to kill bugs, okay? So what I do is I take this right here and just shake it and go down their back with it, just like that. And I take him, oh, hold on buddy. And I 
to shake it down his belly. Oop. Oop, oop, I tried to. Oop. <laughs> shake it down his belly. Might need a helper, obviously. <laughs> I'm like this. Look here, there's a bobtail cat. Isn't that cool? Come like this and just put that powder on there. Now see, Barney, he wants his treatment. Okay. Try to get a little around her tail. One year I did it and didn't do their tail and all, all the fleas went to the cat's tail. Kind of created a problem. All right. So, I have a theory. And the theory is that these cats will go now lick and clean themselves and they also ingest that. And I, I've maybe dewormed these cats once this summer. But if you'll see, those are the fattest healthiest, nicest looking cats. And everybody tells me, Ted, you got the most beautiful cats. Well, that's why. And then also right here, I deworm my cats with this. And that's goat wormer. But it's really the same thing as Panicure. Uh, the primary ingredient in his is uh, fenbendazole. And you just draw a little bit of this up in a syringe. I give each cat about a half a cc, just like that, okay. And I also do the dogs the same way. I give the dogs maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, a cc or a cc and a half. And, uh, and then we dust the dogs too. I don't know. They won't let me catch them. They know it. I'm up to no good when I got this in my hand. but. Uh, you know, we've got some fleas, but we're not overrun with them, and we've got them managed. But I will tell you that fleas hatch every 21 days, and if you get fleas going, it's hard to get them stopped. And uh, they're tough, and they're resilient, and the chemicals that you buy, the flea collars you buy, and if you go to the vet, you better plan on spending a bunch of money, and most likely it probably is not going to work. So give that a try. This is not scientific advice. I'm not making any promises. If, all, if your cat dies, don't call me and want to sue me. It's just I'm trying to help you uh, in a way where you don't have to go to the vet and spend all the money that uh, they're going to want to charge you to do all this because I've heard so many stories. I've lost count of folks that have uh, gone to the vet and spent hundreds of dollars on flea medication, and uh, it really doesn't work. So thank you for watching our video. My heart's in the right place. I want to help folks learn how to do things on their own and be resourceful and to be handy. That's what the handy horseman's all about. But, you know, there's more to horsemanship than just get climbing on a horse's back. you got to know how to manage a barn and how to manage your parasites and your pest, pest control and everything. And uh, you can't be buying rat poison and chemicals all the time to do that. So these are nice. I'm not going to say organic or natural, I'm not going to say that, but these are nice, innovative ways to deal with these things without using what I would call harsh chemicals. I'd invite you to uh, subscribe to our channel. Just hit that subscribe button down there below the uh, video. And uh, we're going to be updating videos here pretty often on these types of things. So. Uh, I'm thankful for all the loyalty of our subscribers, and I apologize for not doing more videos more often, but I'm kind of a busy guy, and we got lots to do around here, but uh, moving forward, we're going to try to do this a little more to help you out. So, thank you for tuning in.